Let's review denial tracking setup. Currently, if I went to utilities to roll setup, there are no specific privileges tied to denial tracking, which means anybody has access to it. We can go to Master Files, AR Control Center, Denial Tracking Action Codes. This is the same setup as what we did in the Collection Action Codes. You would create an action. We might want to tie a next action code to it. And then the follow-up days. Do we want to follow up on this immediately in one day, two days, three days? And then I can click Save. We can go ahead and close the screen. If anybody is currently working in the denial tracking, there are no reports to identify what actions they did or how many patients they touched. To view the denial tracking, we can click on Modules, hover over AR Control Center, and click on Denial Tracking. The top part of this screen is our Search by Filter options. We can search by User, Payment Reason, Carrier Category, Carrier, Date Range, Last Action, or Follow-up Action. My personal favorite is the payment reason. I can select this and I can click my reload and it's going to show me all payment reason codes that are attached to a payment so I can work them. You could also get really specific and do a payment reason code, maybe like DENI, based off of a carrier, BC, so only these would populate. This one might be a secondary, we'll have to go look. So let's go ahead and double click on our Doug Heffernan just to see his account. As you can see here, he's got a secondary insurance that's Blue Cross Blue Shield. It's pulling in because the payment reason code was tied to his Blue Cross Blue Shield. We can go ahead and close that. Back at this screen, we have all of our reasons. And then down here, we can see how many line items we have, how many patients we have. And then it, again, it's at 50 pages. It makes you scroll over to the next page, a maximum of 500. We can view how much of total insurance payments are out there to collect on. So these accounts may have been written off at our $0 level, which we'll go into later to show you that. Um, you have the option of writing off the account and still having it pull into the denial tracking to be worked. We can highlight a line item, select it, and click our view detail but I'm a double clicker, so I'm gonna go ahead and double click on the line item to pull it in. The concept with this is you actually wanna have your first patient up. I've reached the beginning of the list. I'm gonna click cancel because I don't wanna start from the end. This is my first patient. They all have the same denial reason. So my hope is, is that as I'm working these, I'm on the phone with the insurance carrier or I'm online with the online claim status, I'm identifying the issue, and hopefully I can work all six at the same time and get them knocked out. The screen is exactly like our collections module, however, we do not have our statement payments here. We can arrow over to our next patient, we can close the screen, we can update our buckets. If we double click on this, it's going to take us to our patient demographics our responsible party information, our accounts receivable buckets, our insurance coverages. We have our line items. If I single click on this line item and view detail, it's gonna pull me into the charge detail screen. I can demand a paper claim. If I select show all, notice I have four line items here, including my payments and my write-offs. This was the line item that has the payment reason code tied to it. If I click on show all, it will now show me all line items associated with this patient that's outstanding. If I did show single, it's going to take me back to the line item that had the payment reason code tied to it. We get our history grid here. If we have more than so many per line, we can arrow over to the next history screen. We have our blue scrolly bar, which takes us over here so we can view our payment information. We have our visit number, which tells us our total visit charges, our procedure code, which tells us our diagnosis codes and modifiers. The B and the I are wrong on this, so again, this is the I column and this is the B column. Just remember that. Hopefully, it'll get fixed soon. From here, we can click on our actions, and we have the same setup as we had in our collections. Call in. 
testing. We're going to click save. And it's telling me that I need a future action. So I'm going to do my reveal claim later. In order to keep my account on the denial tracking, I need to have a next action tied to it. So let's do this and say we want it off of our denial tracking. We come in here, we've reviewed our account, and we call the insurance carrier and the check is on the way. We may decide that we do not want to keep this on our denial tracking because we know that the check's coming. We can go ahead and click our save button and it's going to say saving an action without a follow-up action removes the payment detail from the denial tracking system. Do you wish to save this action? I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to prompt me one more time just to make sure that I'm completely aware of what I'm doing. And it's going to say, no follow-up action was set, which will result in this account being dropped from the work list. Click OK to continue or cancel to return and add next action. When I click OK, this patient will now be removed from my denial tracking list. I can then go on to my next patient. I can either work it from here or go back to our charge screen and view it from here. The concept is I'm going to keep working it until they're paid off in full or until I've verified that everything is clean on them. I can go to my action history to view all action that has been created on this patient. I'm going to go ahead and close this screen. I'm going to close this. To show you how this ties in, we have our patient up here. We're going to go to our transaction entry. We're going to select a payment. Payment reason codes can be tied to either a patient or insurance portion. So I'm just going to put in my money here, my check number. I'm going to do oldest to newest. There it is. I'm going to click on my gray box and select my payment reason code. If you have questions on how to use this screen, please view the patient billing video trainings. I'm going to just create a code, tie it to it so you can see how this works. I'm going to click add. I'm going to select OK. It's going to just tell me that my math is not matching up correctly. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And here is my payment reason code. I will select OK. We can go to our history screen, click on our plus sign, double click on our line item, and then we can hover over this reason screen to view our code, our description, and the amount. But what it means is that now it's tied to a payment reason, and so this visit will populate in our denial tracking. Payment reason codes are created by going to Master Files, Transaction Codes, Payment Reason Codes. There are some that are auto-defaulted into your software. You can manually create them, and if you use electronic remittance advice, the codes will pre-populate for you. You do have an option of selecting a code and stating that if it gets written off in full and I check mark this, it will pull into my denial tracking. An example of this is you might get a denial for untimely filing. Your inner office policies are that the biller will write off the full amount of that account so that it's not sitting in your accounts receivable. However, you want it to pull to the denial tracking module so the collector can go work it. You would pull up your code, you would check mark this box and click save. All payments posted with a payment reason code of this code would then be pulled into your denial tracking if it got written off in full.